What's up my friends? Um, I'm back here with another Enda shoe. Um, I originally um, reviewed the Enda E10. Uh, the new pair is uh, is just been shipped to me. I'm super excited to get that. But this video, as the uh, title uh, denotes, it, we are talking about the Kubi Fora. Um, you know, I was super excited, you know, me being a trail runner to, to get my hands on this. I love the E10. There was only one problem I had with the E10 and that was the upper, which it sounds like they've changed. So again, super excited to get my hands on the new E10. Um, but the Kubi Fora, oh man, uh, you know, this, this shoe has tremendous potential. I hope that uh, Enda gets to watch this. You know, I, I do have a few suggestions. Me being a trail runner, I, I've been running trails for, oh God, you know, <laughs> ever since I started running 30 plus years ago. Um, so I've been through, you know, countless trail shoes um, and I've run for various companies, um, uh, you know, Hoka, uh, Innovate, uh, La Sportiva. So I've had my foot in a lot of different types of shoes. Uh, and you know, I really think this has potential. So just some things to go over, um, you know, some things that you guys can know about and, uh, and hopefully I can help Enda in, uh, in, you know, redesigning or retooling this just slightly. Um, because like I said, lots of potential here. Very cool shoe. Um, super lightweight, um, a men's, um, men's nine. It is uh, 9.7 ounces. Mine's 11 and a half, so a little bit, a little bit more weight, but not much. So love the weight on it. They did a great job with that. Um, water resistant upper, very cool. Like that idea because it, it also makes for a very durable upper. Um, so you don't have to worry about you know snags and holes and uh, even at flexion points, it looks like it's going to be a very durable um, fabric. Uh, I haven't had this uh, out for a tremendous amount of miles just because. You know, they sent it to me, and, and I wanted to uh, to get a good review out on it. I have enough to give it a you know a really solid review. So um, let's talk about some things here. So um, first thing, four millimeter ramp. I think they were spot on in their ramp choice. You know, this is it's a it's a great medium for um, for for trail shoe. I don't think it's too high, nor you know it's it's not too low for everybody. Some people can't pull a zero drop, and uh, you know certainly. I don't think that a, a trail shoe needs to be too high in the heel, so I think this was a, a good landing point for the uh, the end of trail shoe. So the Kumbi Fora, kudos to you guys for for making that kind of medium um, ramp. I really I really like that and enjoy that. So um, a few things though uh, that we can talk about with the upper, even though they did a great job on the water resistant, um, you know it's um, it's really cool how they they made this. Um, it's a it's a booty. Um, it's, you know, I love that wrap around, wraps around the foot so that, you know, not a lot of debris can get in. It's almost like having your own gator without the, the gator coming up too high. You can see that the collar is, is not too high. It doesn't, uh, you know, there's not a lot of potential here to hit the ankle bone. Um, nice soft material around it too. So you shouldn't get too much irritation uh, around the ankle. So really cool design there. Um, uh, you know, a few things that I think need to be um, reconsidered is that because there has this booty and this, um, you know, water resistant gusset, um, gusseted outer um, or upper is this right here. You can see it's, it's open. There's a pocket right here and I've already had to dump out um, dirt. Okay. So um, what's happened is, you know, obviously if you're on the trails, you're going to get dirt in here. Uh, what happened with old Gore-Tex shoes, because Gore-Tex was um, a separate layer that was just kind of glued um, onto the existing upper is there becomes a layer in between the two. And then as dirt starts to fill in here, just even if it's microscopic, it starts to create tears and it starts to get heavier. The shoe starts to get heavier because you're going to pick up a lot more debris that way. So um, if we can somehow uh, maybe heat weld the upper together uh, and not have that that space I think that would you know resolve this problem um, because like I said I, I, I don't want people to <laughs> to pick up the extra weight um, or to you know to um, to you know uh, ruin the uh, the booty on the inside so just just something to think about there um, other things uh, the heel counter is is great you know, there's, um, I love the fact that they didn't do much of a heel counter here. I'm a big fan of that. I don't think you need to have, um, a, an internal or external heel counter necessarily, uh, cause it, it flexes nice when you go to run uphill. 
the heel doesn't push into the Achilles tendon. I think that's fantastic. Great design idea there. I'm not sure if that's what they're thinking, but you know, I really enjoy that aspect of the shoe. Um, the only problem with the heel counter itself is that it's a bit wide. Now I have a narrower foot, so you know, take that into consideration as well. My heel is pretty narrow, but um, and I don't really complain about many shoes um, having too wide of a heel, but this does not hold my heel really much at all. I tried to use, they've got these extra kind of eyelets here. You can see that and they're, they're kind of further back. So I tried to lace it through those to try to pull the heel closer to my Achilles so that it didn't feel as loose. Um, and I basically, I can step out of the shoe, unfortunately. So, um, and I tried to pull those, you know, into, cause a lot of times if you use that last eyelet, um, it will snug the heel. It'll pull the heel forward into the, you know, into the Achilles so that it snugs it up. In this case, it didn't work that way. Um, the other problem with that was that once I laced across, so when I brought the lace across this way, if you can see the, uh, the, the tongue itself, it's got this little dip right here. There's no fabric for the lace to go across. So it just sits right on the front of the ankle. So, um, you know, a, a potential fix could be just to place another eye hole, um, you know, in the fabric here and then close that up more. I mean, I understand it was a great design idea so that when this flexes forward, just as I said, the heel counter doesn't go into the Achilles, this won't push into the front of the ankle. I, I can get that too. But, you know, again, with, with the lacing, in order to be able to snug up the heel potentially more, I, I think that, uh, I think that it needs something to snug up that heel just a little bit more. So uh, just a few ideas there in, uh, you know, in design um, and in consideration of this. Um, other things, uh, so it's, it's a really great transitional shoe. So um, obviously you can see the tread is, is really, it's not um, overly aggressive. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's a great shoe for running um, road to trail, um, very good hybrid in that regard. So if you're running dirt roads um, or you have to run the road to get to the trail, you know, this is great. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a sticky enough rubber. It's not overly tactile. Um, so not super grippy. So, you know, obviously not designed for a lot of like really uh, loose uh, or muddy trail. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, it's pretty versatile. Yeah, you can probably, I, I mean, I got away with it on single track. Um, it's, you know, it's fine in that regard, but it's not an overly high traction shoe. So keep that in mind. Um, the, what I would suggest, it's got a really good toe spring. You can see it really snaps back. Um, but what I would suggest, this flex groove right here that's uh, kind of right under the metatarsals, it needs to be a little bit deeper, or this is, it's a double foam, right? So um, it, it provides pr a great protection. The, um, the, uh, the, the bottom layer of foam of EVA is, is, is uh, it's got a high durometer. It's really, um, it's, it's pretty stiff. So, um, you know, two things here, either create a deeper flex groove so that has more flexion here. Um, it's not bad, you know, like there is flexion, but it, it, it does feel stiff. The torsional rigidity, and what I mean by torsional rigidity is when I try to turn it this way, like we need it to do on trails, it doesn't have that flexibility that I, I, would, I would love for it to have. Because when I get on a single track and I'm moving around, especially on technical trails, rocks, roots, etc., I want that shoe to be able to twist and turn. And this one, is, it's pretty rigid in that regard. So either softening up the durometer of that bottom foam would be tremendous, or adding a few more flex screws. They've got a really good kind of, um, um, you know, medial flex groove here to help hopefully, you know, increase that torsional, torsional <laughs> or decrease the torsional rigidity. But I think it, it just needs a little bit more flex. The mid, the kind of mid of the shoe, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's semi-flexible, but again, I think for a trail shoe, it just needs to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more flexible. Underfoot feel, um, again, since there is a, a higher durometer in the shoe, it's, it's, it's a bit stiffer, it does feel and ride a little bit um, stiff. So, uh, you know, for that step-in comfort, for the on-trail comfort, you know, we, we, we typically say that the trail is our cushioning. It's, you know, it's a softer surface, but this does ride a little bit stiff, a little bit hard. So would love to see the durometer come down a little bit more just for a more comfortable ride. Um, but, you know, again, great start on the shoe. I think, uh, you know, it's it's got great potential. Um, I'll keep it in my line for sure. I love the uh, full ground, gaunt, excuse me, 
full ground contact that the shoe has. Um, so, you know, it, it is great when you land because it's not instable. Um, you know, so love that concept right there. Um, I, I think they could probably even decrease a little bit more weight by um, taking out some of the the foam that's here um if you know if that's possible in the design you could kind of make that a little bit more hollow um but you know that said you do that potential to pick up rocks so you know there's a a risk reward there for for cutting out extra weight not that this really needs to cut out any extra weight it's really under coming in under 10 ounces i think that's tremendous um so some great things here again um you know going to keep this in my rotation, keep working through it, uh, you know, and maybe after I put on some more miles, uh, you know, just like the attend did, I think it, it might loosen up a little bit more. I think I just probably just need to give it a little bit more time in there. So, you know, uh, forgive me for, you know, having this earlier review and saying that it is a little bit stiff, but um, I think, you know, overall, Enda, congratulations on a, a great introductory trail shoe to the market. I love what you're doing. Uh, I think you've, you've got a, a great idea here, some things to build off of, but um, I, I encourage people to try out this new um, Kumbi Fora. It's an awesome shoe. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my other shoe reviews. Um, as soon as I get the new E10, I'll be uh, putting some miles on that as well, and I'll bring you another review. Thank you, Enda. Uh, really appreciate They sent me the shoe. Uh, they sent me the shirt. I really appreciate you guys letting me check this out and review it. Uh, I hope it's helpful to uh, to all of you and to Enda that you may um, you know take some of these ideas and uh, and make some changes to them. Uh, that's, that's what these videos are about. Um, I, I hope I wasn't overly uh, uh, aggressive in my review. Uh, just some things that I noticed and I think can and you know be changed and really make this shoe an awesome awesome potential for a lot more runners. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.